days before he was scheduled to start serving a 40-month prison term for lying to Congress, obstruction of justice, and witness tampering, Roger Stone received a commutation from President Trump. Shortly after the commutation, I spoke to Stone on the day he was supposed to report to prison. Now, I've known Roger Stone for more than 10 years. He is a world-class political scoundrel and a political dirty trickster. But I have to tell you, this Roger Stone is one I hadn't expected to find. I'm just asking you on a personal level. What would it have been like if you had to report to prison today? What do you? Think I would. I think I would have. I think I would have died in pretty short order. I'm 67 years old and I have asthma, a lifelong uh, a medical history of it, and sending me to a uh, to a COVID-infested prison where now even the Bureau of Prisons' own website shows that there are 60 cases and I think 43 outstanding tests was tantamount to a death sentence. So I think I've answered your, your question. It would have been, uh, it would, I would never have lived to see the appeal that I have filed. How confident were you that you were gonna see some sort of relief and not end up in prison? Uh, I was very confident, not because I knew anything or not because I'd been told uh, anything officially or unofficially. In fact, my lawyers were never in touch with the White House lawyers until after the commutation. And I'd had no discussions with anybody, but I uh, really changed my life back in January. I, uh, I had the opportunity to meet Reverend Franklin Graham, uh, and he gave me some extraordinarily good advice. I was reborn. I reaffirmed my relationship with Jesus Christ. I prayed fervently for this moment. Uh, he sent me a very nice Bible and told me specific areas that I should read. Uh, I was helped by others in the spiritual journey of uh, Pastor Mark Burns, uh, Pastor Daryl Scott, two great African-American uh, pastors, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Randy Coggins, my own uh, parish priest in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Father Michael Grady. Uh, and, um, you know, I was very confident that if you will turn your life over to Christ, that you will be protected by the Lord, that he will never abandon you, that he will always protect you. So I was confident that um, this would be resolved in that way. I wasn't Roger. worried. I wasn't scared. I wasn't angry. I wasn't nervous. I really believed that it would all work out, and I still do. Uh, Roger, people hearing you talk about, you know, your religious conversion a few months ago, you can, you can forgive them if they're somewhat skeptical. You know, the, no, look, I, 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 completely understand. I completely understand. I've been a hardball a political operative for a long time, and I'm sure there are folks out there saying, that's a ploy, that's a head fake, uh, that's a ploy for public sympathy and so on. I don't really care. There's only one person or one entity, I guess I should say, that I care about. There's only one person who knows what's in my heart. There's only one person that can know uh, or one entity that can know whether I'm sincere and that is God and he knows where I am. Uh, and uh, we'll see by my actions and the way I, I conduct my life going forward, whether or not I can walk in his way. None of us are perfect. We're all sinners, Jim, including you, everybody. Uh, but we have to do our best to live the way God wants us to. And my, uh, my rebirth is completely genuine. After your commutation, Robert Mueller published an op-ed in which he says of you, he remains a convicted felon, and rightly so. What's your reaction to what Robert Mueller said? Well, I think he remains a traitor, and rightly so, because we now know from the declassified documents that the entire Mueller investigation was a seditious fraud to try to remove the president of the United States. Roger, you, you maintain your innocence. You're making that clear. But it's, I find it suspicious then. The president didn't pardon you. The president gave you a commutation, which well, means I actually he allows prefer your, wait, Roger, let me just finish. He allows your conviction to stand. So, it, you know... Doesn't the president, by just merely commuting your sentence instead of pardoning you, accept your guilt in that case? No, actually, it's the exact opposite. When you accept a pardon, you're accepting guilt. When you take a commutation, your, your appeal can go forward. So I'm now fighting for exoneration. The only way I can clear my name uh, is, to, uh, is to get a new trial and win a new trial. Uh, if you look at it historically, one of the reasons why Nixon hesitated on the Ford pardon was because it includes an assumption of the acceptance of guilt. So I, was, I would have preferred from the beginning a commutation over a pardon. Uh, it's not the easier road, I admit that, and there is a great deal of risk going forward. Uh, and it is my understanding that if I were to have my conviction overturned, 
I would have to face trial with the same judge. Now, I've got to make a judgment whether I can get a fair trial in front of this judge, given her conduct in my first trial. This is what Howard Feynman wrote that you told him, referring to President Trump. He knows I was under enormous pressure to turn on him. I would have eased my situation considerably, but I didn't. They wanted me to play Judas. I refused. Some have interpreted that as suggesting that you had information detrimental to the president that you could provide him. Is that the case? No, that is exactly the opposite of what is true. And I've said on the record in a thousand places since, uh, since the gag order was lifted that they, they pressured me to, uh, to bear false witness against him. What exactly did the president say when he came on the line for you? Well, it was a short call. He was very gracious. He said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, signing a, a, an act of clemency, which is a full commutation of your sentence. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, because I do not think you got a fair trial, and I think you should ask for a new trial. You should fight for a new trial. You should appeal. And I said, I'm appealing. And he said, I think you should do that. He said, I'm also doing it as an act of mercy, because I think at your age and in your health, Going to prison where there is COVID-19 uh, is very, very dangerous. You might not live long enough to see your appeal through. I agree with that. Uh, and then he said, um, it was terrible what was done to you, but your investigation into you was illegitimate because the entire investigation was illegitimate. I agreed with that. Then he asked me how my beautiful wife was. I said, she is, she's holding up pretty well. I asked how the first lady was. He said she was great. Uh, and then he said, uh, well, good luck. Now you are a free man. And that was the end of it. It was you, a, an enormous relief, as you might imagine. Do you envision um, helping the Trump campaign as they move forward? Do you see yourself as any sort of advisor, as you have been for many, many years in the past? Uh, with the I don't foresee having any formal role in the campaign. Uh, I intend to write and speak, uh, uh, you know, in favor of the president's reelection, something I feel very strongly about. But you know, Jim, this has destroyed me financially. I've lost everything, my home, my savings, most of my insurance, uh, uh, my ability to make a living for almost two years. So I've got to rebuild my life. I'm, I'm virtually indigent. 